Hello, my name is Sydney Santos and I am a research intern at CRAB and today I will be talking about EDTA chelation therapy. EDTA stands for ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid and it was first used after World War II when sailors from the Navy developed lead poisoning from ship paint. EDTA was so effective in alleviating their symptoms that in the 50s, the FDA approved it to treat heavy metal poisoning. And that includes not just lead, but several other toxic heavy metals like mercury and cadmium. It is the most frequently used treatment for heavy metal toxicity today as it has been of the past few decades. More recently though, scientists have been studying EDTA's effectiveness in treating cardiovascular and neurodegenerative diseases mainly, but also some other serious ailments like cancer and kidney disease. And that is because these have been associated with high levels of toxic metals. I want to emphasize though that such treatment is seen as very alternative because it's not FDA approved. Um, so physicians are less likely to use it, although it is obviously um, seen in many places. But again, there's not enough evidence to make it more mainstream. The majority of research that has taken place on using EDTA outside of heavy metal poisoning treatment has mostly been for cardiovascular disease uh, because EDTA is very promising in addressing plaque buildup and improving arterial wall plasticity, both of which are triggers for several detrimental heart diseases. So I wanted to talk briefly about how we get exposed to heavy metals. It occurs on a daily basis because many things that we expose ourselves to are full of these metals, which can include zinc, arsenic, lead, mercury, cadmium, iron. On the right is some images of what these look like, but obviously when we ingest them, they don't look exactly like this. They're in very small particulate form, mainly in our water, food, and soil. Uh, heavy metals are also often found in today's world, at least, in a lot of the industrial made products like packaging, you know, clothing, you name electronics, you name it. But Mostly our water, food, and soil can be pretty bad uh, sources of these heavy metals. And those can get contaminated through pollution from industrial activities, abandoned mines, mine tailings, paint, electronic, petrochemical waste. And then these heavy metals accumulate in our tissues after a period of time. And at a certain point, it can get very toxic. It is important to know that a small amount of such metals is really important for maintaining homeostasis. That's why you see heavy metals like zinc, copper, iron in supplement form, and people take them a lot, but at a certain point, it is um, toxic. Sorry. So there are two infographics that I wanted to share in this presentation because I thought they were interesting. The first on the left is some drinking water guidelines um, for sev from several uh, important health organizations. And the parameters are they only include a few heavy metals, but I wanted to point out how small these um, acceptable levels are. It's just shocking how little can cause detriment to our body. And these are just the drinking water guidelines. There are several separate measures for like soil and uh, crops. But again, it is crazy how small these amounts are. And then on the right, you can see this, I thought was very interesting, how much lead has been considered toxic over the past decades. And between the 70s and the early 2010s, that number has decreased, you know, by tenfold or, you know, it went from 60 to like six milligrams, which is just absolutely crazy that that number could change so drastically. And that's just because of how much research has occurred over time. And I can only imagine how that how much smaller that number will get as more research occurs. Um, and yeah, this trend is not just for lead. It goes for all heavy metals since more research has been gone has gone on. Um, for like tons of metals out there. So I briefly wanted to talk about how metals actually interfere with our body and cause dysfunction. They work specifically with the metals, or sorry, proteins. And they do this by replacing the hydrogens within the proteins. Uh, if you see in the diagram on the left, 
the metal uh, embeds itself in the protein and displaces the hydrogens, and that totally alters the protein's character, which prevents its corresponding enzyme from carrying out metabolic processes and breaking it down. The metal is also, also in a more stable state within the protein complex, so it's unlikely to leave uh, spontaneously. So due to these factors, the new compound cannot be broken down, and then they just build up in our tissue and that causes dysfunction and symptoms of such buildup is a very diverse range and can include GI disorders, ataxia, lung disease, cancer, and neurodegenerative diseases, cardiovascular diseases, and much, much more. It's really astonishing the variety and breadth of the symptoms. So EDTA is actually very effective at getting rid of these heavy metals in our tissues that have built up because it is a very strong chelating agent. Chelation is the bonding of a ligand to metal ions, and there are other chelating agents that are utilized for metal detoxification, and that can include DMSA and DMPS. Uh, there are these different chelating agents because um, they address certain heavy metals more effectively. So it kind of depends on what kind of toxicity a patient has that a physician who using this therapy um, might use a different agent basically. But EDTA comes in two forms. Most commonly it is seen as calcium disodium editate. And what it does, if you check out the molecules on the right, it basically uh, the metal, metal ion displaces the calcium within the molecule. And then that uh, final protein metal complex or the new EDTA complex can get flushed out of the body just from urine. And as a side note, the other form of EDTA is sodium editate, but it's less commonly used. So as I mentioned before, uh, EDTA is mainly used as a heavy metal detoxifier. And then of course, in terms of brain health, it's used to treat neurotoxicity. It indirectly also acts as an antioxidant uh, because heavy metals promote the creation of free radical species, which are very detrimental in the body because it destroys DNA and damages and or destroys cells. EDTA is also very helpful because it might even be able to cross the blood brain barrier. And that is, there are several studies, but the main one in 2014 showed that when EDTA therapy was given to patients with high level high levels of iron in their brain, that, that those levels decreased drastically. So that is really promising for um, any kind of brain ailment. So patients with neurodegenerative diseases are often found to have high levels of very toxic, toxic metals as research has shown in the past few decades. So EDTA therapy is actually really good at reducing such symptoms because it uh, removes such metals from the body. And such examples ex include MS, which is associated with galdonium, Parkinson's and lead, ALS with mercury, and Alzheimer's also with mercury and aluminum and some other heavy metals. But yeah, when uh, chelation therapy was given to such patients, their symptoms were relieved. And I also wanted to point out that everyone has as I mentioned before, is exposed to such heavy metals on a daily basis. So pretty much anyone could benefit from chelation therapy with EDTA because, you know, even if we might seem healthy, such heavy metals can have an effect on our body and be causing dysfunction in ways we don't even realize. So the EDTA therapy is uh, diluted with a saline solution and administered intravenously over a long period, usually around two hours, and that occurs for multiple days in a row. Uh, it, EDTA is diluted because higher concentrations of it can result in adverse side effects as most um, medications or treatments go. That includes pain at the time of injection, nausea, vomiting, kind of more sickness related side effects. And oral su supplementation isn't really an option because it isn't absorbed well in the GI tract. So it very often has to be administered intravenously. And then urine samples are taken before and after treatment to observe the levels of detox and metals, which is really cool because you can see the progress and the work your body is doing to get rid of that metal with the help of EDTA right as it's happening. 
And lastly, EDTA therapy is often administered with a combination of minerals and vitamins, including B vitamins, ascorbic acid, zinc, copper, iron, and that is because EDTA isn't a super specific chelating agent, so it can actually remove some of the beneficial minerals out of your body, so we want to make sure that that is replenished if you're receiving that therapy, the, at least the minerals that are helpful for you. So yes, that's my presentation, and these are my references. Thank you for watching.